Next we'll go to our maintenance screen and we'll go to manage print heads, enter in our password, and then we've got a button here for calibrate print heads. We can select that, we'll select the roll position, which is roll one, and then we'll say start automatic calibration. So now you can see the media is outside of the printer just a bit, but it paused, and there's a scanner carriage that goes across and it's scanning in the seam areas of the media to make the appropriate adjustments. What mode is it? What mode? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. No. No, it, it's, it's actually, I think it's in the uh, screen saying that the calibration was done. We can say okay on that. And then next we'll see it gives us the information for the actual calibration, uh, the offset between the seam for the seams and the position of each of the heads. Uh, we also have a update alignment uh, here, which this checkbox by default is filled in. And if we want it to update the alignment file, then we can just leave that as is and say OK. And now it's completely done. Um, the next thing we can do after this is we can print off a CMYK test pattern off of the same roll one that we just calibrated. And then we can overlay the CMYK test pattern to see the results of the, of the calibration. Well, we would overlay it with the calibration uh, print that was just produced, so that way you could see um, where the seam areas lie. You know, so you're not trying to hunt around on the, on the image where that is. So as soon as that uh, screen, I'm sorry, the print comes out, uh, we'll take a look at it. The other thing is we're going to want to uh, put it on top in the same orientation as it comes out of the printer. So now we can take the CMYK bars that just printed out and we can overlay them on top of the calibration uh, to see where the seams are lining up. So you can see right here real clearly where the seam is and you can see we have a step um, in the, the Y direction, but it looks pretty good in the X direction because I can't really see like a dark line. Maybe they're in the cyan just a tad, but a lot of times that you're not going to be able to see. And you really want to have, um, you'd rather have an overlap than a gap, okay? Because mixed inside of a job, you're not going to be able to see the overlap very much, but you will be able to see a gap um, in the job. So uh, to me, this looks pretty good in the X direction. It just needs some adjustment in the Y direction. Now, you kind of want to take a look at every, the whole thing as a whole um, because right now, if I come across here, this seam looks off. This seam looks pretty good. This one's pretty good. And this one is off a little bit here. So what I was trying to see is if you know, we wanted to adjust these two heads at the same time to get everything to line up, or if it's just one head that we really want to pick out, okay? Because I'd rather, you know, if you see an offset here, but maybe both of these heads need to be adjusted down versus trying to move this one up, this one up, and then this one up again, you know? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay. So I'm going to take this printhead 0 and I'm going to move it up and I'm also going to take printhead 4 and move it up. It looks like, you know, these three heads in the middle are pretty well aligned, okay? And being such a short media, the camera could be bouncing on the ends of the media a little bit and that's what's causing this not to scan quite right. So we can come over to the screen and we can go over to the calibration and then we can select, we're at roll one, so we can select head zero, and I want to move head zero up. So I want to move it by probably, let's say like two or three units, okay? Every five units in the Y direction is? One millimeter. One millimeter? Yeah. Mm, uh, let me make sure. The Y direction is the 50 units. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, okay. So the Y direction is what we want to move it in. And in the Y direction, 50 units equals one millimeter. So actually, I'm probably going to go like 25 
or even 50 you know units so right now my y direction is saying that it's um, 3240 so I'm going to increase that by 50 because I want to I want to see a difference there okay so I've got head zero selected it's also changed my numbers to green and then I can just go from 40 to 90 uh, I'm sorry in the up direction the numbers are actually decreasing so I'm going to go from 40 down to I guess it's going to be instead of 340 it's going to be 290 and then for my value to take I'm just going to say save and now these options down here are grayed out it's taken my numbers I can come back to my test pattern and I can select print it's going to run a new test pattern with my new numbers and then we can compare it again to the uh, original to see how much it's moved. So also, you know, you were seeing a line right here, okay? So you can see that that line is primarily just in the magenta and the cyan. It's not and on the CMYK bar. You can't see it in the black, you can't see it in the yellow. Okay. So it didn't do too much of an adjustment. I can see that my step is less. I could probably come up by the same amount again. Okay, really to get there. And then this side also needs to be adjusted. These two seams are still pretty good. Another thing I kind of see right here is that these two are lined up, but I've also got some offset here as well. And it's about the same offset as is on this side. So instead of adjusting head zero, I'm going to adjust head one down. Okay? You can try doing multiple heads at a time, but sometimes you might get confused. You know? So doing one thing or one area at a time is nice. So I always take a look at this seam and the adjacent seam to try to figure out if this is the head that I want to be moving or which head I want to be moving. Whether it's head zero or head one, I take a look at the two seams there. Okay? Because I could just be adjusting this seam right here, but then I'd also need to come up over here. So I'd rather adjust one head instead of adjusting two heads to take care of two seams at once. So if somebody wants to go in and adjust um, head one down by 50 points. That's okay. Increasing, the arrows are where you want to move it to. Okay? Okay. And then save. And then save, yep. So next we're going to go through and show you how to save a calibration file once you've successfully created it. So we've created a shortcut to the calibration folder here on our desktop. If you don't have the shortcut created yet, you can browse through Windows Explorer, go into D Drive, which is your printer data. Next, go into the WideStar folder, and then you'll see the calibration folder in here. We can go inside here, and the calibration that we liked was for roll one, which we just got done created. Uh, so we will right click on that, say copy, and then we'll take it into a storage folder uh, that we can place really anywhere we want to. I'll keep it in the, uh, the calibration uh, folder. And here we can just go and say paste. And it puts it in there. Now I can rename this calibration file so that it means something to me. So put 30-inch 30, 30 mat paper. 30... Okay. In reality, you know, you might want to do ne not necessarily the width, but oh. the weight. So, do you know what the weight of it is? Uh, 60 pound. 60 pound? So, we'll go 60, 60 pound matte paper, okay? Because it doesn't really care what the width of it is, okay? Right. You really want to know the weight and the, the coating on it, okay? That's what's going to affect your calibration more than anything else. So, now that we have that saved, we can go back in here at a later time if we you know, have, have a need to change the calibration on roll one to something else. Let's say we've got gloss loaded in roll one and we want to go back to that mat that we had originally saved. We can go back to our calibration window, 
we can select roll one and then we can say load calibration file. Next we can browse to where we saved the calibration file. Select it there and say open. And now it brings it back into roll one position. And we're, we're done and we're ready to use that matte paper again in roll one position. It doesn't tell you the name. There's no way you will have to. Let's say that you loaded the the, the file, mm -hmm. and then you do something else, and then you come back. You're like, oh, did I load it or not? You know. So no. No. It, it, the, you will have to do the, the steps again. The name for the role, like these preset names here, it loads it by feed position. Okay, or it stores it by feed position, not necessarily media type. Okay, so that's why when we copy the, cal the original calibration and put it into storage, we'll save it and rename it something meaningful, meaningful to us. Mm -hmm. Not roll one, but 60 pound mat. Mm -hmm. Okay, that way from this list of stored calibrations, when we go to load it, we can see which one we want to pick. And whatever source uh, position we have selected when we select the load button it's where it's going to load that profile into. They're rolling, take 21 and 3, 2, and action. So now we're going to show you guys how to clean the plat area. Um, whenever you're cleaning the print head and the platen area inside the machine, you want to use a lint-free wipe and distilled water. So we can go ahead and open up the clamshell, and we're going to extend it out to the service position, which opens it up even further. Um, you're going to want to see that in the platen area right now, you're in the capped position. Okay, so to start out with, we can go ahead, if you've got any um, ink that's on the rubber cap, you can clean that area off with uh, a lint-free wipe and distilled water. So we can go ahead and clean our print heads. Every time you wipe the um, nozzles, you always want to use a fresh area of your wipe. You never want to be wiping across the head uh, with a used area. And be gentle as, as you go across the nozzles, they are fragile. You're going to want to clean uh, the platen area and your print heads, your print head area off probably on a daily basis. If you're printing on the machine on a regular basis, you're going to start to see um, ink build up. You're also going to see that there's going to be discoloration on the aluminum uh, area around the print heads as well. And that you can also wipe off um, as well. You don't have to be, it's not as fragile, you can be a little bit more aggressive in that area. Uh, to, to clean that area off, but distilled water wipes everything off real easily. And next I can go around uh, the rubber caps to clean any ink off of that area. You clean the area off of the rubber caps um, so that the ink doesn't come back onto the print head after it's cleaned off, you know. If there's nothing that cleans the rubber caps themselves, so once you get ink on there, it's just going to come back onto the head unless you manually remove it. Keep in mind that in the center of the cap is a wick and that's always going to have ink on it. So there's no need really to get on the center of the cap area. You actually want to try to stay off of that area. So you don't pick up ink unnecessarily. And you're just cleaning the areas of the cap that actually touch the print head. Next we can go into our diagnostic GUI and we can move the service stations to the platen position. Now remember that um, 
that button to go to platen is an orange button and it's not going to work unless you've got diagnostics enabled. So in the diagnostics GUI there is a service tab uh, for the service station itself and that's where you can select the go to platen and then it acts pushes the platens up on the service station so that way now you can wipe that off so you can wipe all the area off here there's not that much on there because we just got done cleaning it a little bit ago but after a full day's worth of printing, you're going to have quite a bit of overspray that you're going to end up removing. The other thing is, is you've got your media encoder roll here. You really don't want to touch that. There's really no need. It won't pick up ink. Uh, if you do, just make sure that it comes clean again. But there's, you want to kind of stay away from your media encoder. Again, the platens have a wick in the center. There's always going to be ink on, on inside the center of the wick. There is a beveled area on each side of the wick that may have some ink buildup on there as well. So you may have a need to just give it a quick wipe just to remove the ink that's adjacent to the, uh, the wick. Okay. And that is it. That takes care.